Tight line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Well, you can't change us, that's the way we know. Cajun people live like they did long ago. So join the fun, live off the land, cause there ain't nothing better than a Louisiana man. Line, trap line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, mustard greens, that's how we live, and it sure feels fine. Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name's Rodney Dupree, and today we got a treat for y'all. We're in Hammond, Louisiana, over at Bruce Mitchell's house, who's one of the alligator hunters on the Swamp People Show. Uh, we've got my grandma here, two of my aunts is here, and we're going to be doing some old school cooking. We're going to talk about the old days of alligator hunting. We're going to cook up some food. We're going to show y'all some old pictures. So y'all stay tuned. Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. All right, y'all. We in Hammond over at Bruce Mitchell's house, y'all. And this is, everybody knows him, Bruce Mitchell from the Swamp doing? People. Doing good. Doing good. Uh, what you going to cook for us today? I'm going to cook some uh, biscuits, kind of old times. Old school. Yeah. And uh, use my Dutch ovens to cook with my charcoals. And uh, this way we cook a lot when we're camping. And, you know, we, we camp a lot on the road or at the, down the river or whatever. Uh -huh. And we go outside and cook. And this is the way you used to do in the old time. I, you can cook anything you can in your house in this oven. In the Dutch oven. In the Dutch oven. And we fry stuff or just whatever, you know. But right now I'm going to cook some biscuits. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to start out with a, some flour here. That looks about right. That looks like about a yeah. little two cups, so. Uh, two and a half. So we're going to call this three. All right. Now, I got a couple questions. I know people's dying to know. Uh, What's that? How did Swamp People get started? Well, basically, what happened, how it got started, I think it was going to be a documentary. Uh-huh. And uh, after they got about four or five days of our feminine sent back to New York and uh, California, uh -huh. they said, hey, we got something here. And uh, it's just been crazy ever since. Yeah. Now, yeah. now, is there going to be a sixth year? Are y'all going to film uh, for the sixth year? Actually, yes. Y'all are? Yep. They done called. They said we're going to do season six. So I'm excited well, you, about that. Well, you heard it right here, y'all. He, there will be another season. So don't don't get uh, don't get disappointed. It will be back. One way or the other, I'm going to be out there doing it. Whether they're filming me or not, I'm still going to yeah. be catching my gators. I got you. Know? you. I got you. So, we're still going to be living and cooking no matter yeah, well, what, yeah, if it's on TV or not. We got to eat no matter what we got to eat. Now, uh, now you've been on TV for a while. How, how, is, uh, how has that changed your life? It really, uh, as far as me personally, I haven't changed none. Uh, my wife keep wanting me to change. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, how can you do something you don't know? Yeah. You know? Uh, uh, only thing different is, like, we, you can't hardly go nowhere. If you go out to eat or something, you got to allow an extra hour or two. Or if you go shopping somewhere, you gotta allow an extra hour or two because you got to meet people, sign autographs, take pictures. Yeah, or, you know it's yeah. just part the part the part of it. But I like to talk, so I don't have no problem. Yeah, with it. yeah, you gotta keep yeah. having whoever's with you going. Come on, come yeah. on, yeah. come on. Well, my wife grabs me by the hair and just yanks me and says, "Come on, we got to go." <laughs> now, uh, tell me, I, I know you're married. You got yeah, some kids. Yeah, I've been married for uh, 34 years. Got uh -huh. two girls. Uh, What's their names? Uh, Janice and. Uh, Lorraine, that's uh -huh. my daughters. Gotcha. And I got two two grandbabies, and that, that that's fun. If I knew what grandkids would be about, we'd just skip the kids and went straight to the grandkids. <laughs> so we have a ball with the grandkids. I, I bet, I bet. Now you hunt and fish too when you're oh, not on yeah, TV. Yeah, shoot, yeah. That's all I try to do: hunt, fish, and cook. And usually I'm hunting something to to, to cook. Hunting something know? to cook. <laughs> yeah. You like to deer hunt, duck hunt? Oh yeah, I deer What's your hunt. Favorite? Duck hunt, neutral. Squirrel, rabbit, uh, we do a lot of fishing. Uh, we like to eat fish, turtles. Gotcha. What's your favorite fishing hole or where you like to go fish the I most? I fish in man shack a lot. Do you? Yeah. Uh, catch a lot of catfish down there. I, I love, love the, they got big ones too. Oh, yeah. The yeah. story is you can uh, put soft shell crab on there and catch the big oh, catfish. Oh, we're not going to waste no crab. <laughs> <laughs> if, I got, if I got soft shell crab, I already got something to eat. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. We'll put some Back lit. in the day, we used to. Yeah. But uh, see, back before they had all these buffets and stuff, I had friends that shed crabs and stuff, mm -hmm. and back then, they sold to all the restaurants, and if a leg was missing, they couldn't sell it. 
So oh. they brought them to me. So I, I would have big old A.M.P. bags, if people know what an A.M.P. bag is anymore, yeah. full of soft shell crabs. Well, I'd eat what I could and then fish with some of them too. But they work excellent for fish bait. But, yeah, that was old. I'd it, never done it. I'd heard it, the rumor. It's just hard to cut one up and put him on that on that uh, on that hook. You know, I'd rather you know put him on a piece of bread <laughs> yeah you're right you're right well i'm gonna let you get back to your uh, right. getting your ingredients going right here now uh, uh on the show y'all catch alligators and all uh when you think you caught your first alligator legally <laughs> <laughs> yeah for tv purposes when you caught your first oh, alligator for TV, well, well that was five six years ago but uh <laughs> i've hunted fish gators all my life we used to catch them at the camp and stuff and yeah my grandpa on him and uh and y'all took them up, Actually, I'm sure. Actually, I didn't, yeah. Well, back then, I didn't know what they was talking about. You know, they would say, you know, they would call it long tail frog. Oh, <laughs> man. So, but we ate we ate some down the river like that, you know. And uh, really didn't know what it was until later on in life. We ate it, you know. It yeah. didn't matter what it was. If yeah. I'm all cooked that you ate it. And that's just, that was just part of it. Now, who taught you how to alligator hunt? Probably my grandpa Hebert. Uh I, I got pictures of me and him when I was, oh, I guess one and two years old. Cool. And uh, he, they basically lived down the Tanspaho River. So, uh, you know, it was just uh, something they did. You know, something they did is part of life, he, you know, hunting alligator and stuff. And we ate it and stuff. And now, now, over the years, though, uh, the alligator rules have changed, I'm sure. To, oh, yeah. Over the well, it, first it went to wide open hunting with tags and stuff, you know. And then it got to where, you know, they cut patches out of the gator here mm -hmm. and there, you know, and, and now it's back to the regular, regular old routine of, you know, catching him. And you don't have to put no patch on it, but it's still strictly, you know, you have to have tags, license and land to hunt alligator. Just don't go out and think you can go hunt an alligator because you're going to go to jail. Right, right. You know, that's people federal. don't realize that. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> And yes. you don't want to go to jail over alligator. No, no. You might as well just go buy you some chicken or get you a cheeseburger from yeah. somewhere or something. Yeah. Definitely. All right, y'all. Well, I'm, I'm going to let him go to cooking here and getting everything together. And uh, we're going to check on my aunt, my nanny over here and see what she's cooking. And we'll be right back. So y'all hang on. All right, y'all. This is my nanny, Lynette Ernest. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm Thank glad y'all come out here with us today. Oh, we're honored. Thank you. Now, what you cooking? I'm cooking some smothered potatoes. That's my kind of like my specialty. I, I was telling you, potato stew is my my ultimate. They love potato stew at my house. Gotcha. But I will cook this because this is a fast little thing, man. You, I'm throwing stuff together. They're hungry. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Okay. Throw that in a pot and and a hot hot grease, and I just keep stirring and stirring. And then when I see that they're browning and doing their thing, okay. I throw in some, I'm sorry. I throw in some onions. Okay, so we're gonna brown the potatoes, throw in the onions. And then I'm gonna turn it low and put the lid on, and then I'm, I'm gonna put parsley uh, kind of towards the end because uh -huh. that's your little good vegetable that you gotcha. don't wanna cook too much. And I put a little bit of parsley, I'm not gonna put a whole lot because my family goes, what's that green stuff up <laughs> in the potatoes? You know, it's like, but anyway. Kids freak out on the green yes, stuff. Yes, yeah. so anyway, uh, it, you know, it's mostly potatoes and onions. Now, every once in a while, I'll put sausage, like, um, I'll add just some good smoked sausage. And I say that because sometimes this is just a little side dish. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Some but kind of when that's our supper, then that's... Need we'll, a little we'll, meat in it. Yes, we'll put some sausage in there. So. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you get things going. Line, sitting on a pipeline waiting for the sun to shine snap beans red beans cornbread and mustard greens that's how we live and it sure feels fine turkey squirrel deer gator and hogs 12 gauge shotgun and some rabbit dogs staying at the camp six days straight coming on to mama sure feels great Good. Hey, change us, that's the way we know Hey, the people live like they did long ago So join the fun, live off the land Cause there ain't nothing better than a little bit of land Hold up now, I'll shut it just in case he ain't dead, huh? Oh, yeah, he did go. He's got a 
not dead when they turn up. That's how we live, and it sure feels right. We'll be right back after these messages. Hola Nawal Seafood is your one-stop shop for all your seafood needs. With seasoning, sauces, dips, and trays. Local A Meat River Catfish when in season. Dungeness crab, shrimp, frog legs, soft shell crabs, alligator, scallops, and fresh cooked cracklings. Crawfish season is now in full swing. Come by and get them. Live or bought. With prices that can be beat. At Hole in the Wall Seafood. Dana, we have a flat. That's okay, Weezer. We'll just call Ed's Tire Service. Ed's Tire Service has been in business for 27 years. It's a 24-hour roadside service for on-site repairs. No job is too big or too small. So remember, when you're having tire trouble, call for my tire service. Just when you thought you had the best, there's better. The new Hustler Raptor, heavy duty welded steel deck, professional grade cut quality, premium Kawasaki power, all from just $27.99. The new Raptor series from Hustler. Tools, not toys. Come get your Raptor Super Duty today at Gotro's Lawn and Garden in Gonzales. Marlin's Pizza has two great locations, one in Prairieville and one in Santa Mall. Dine in, carry out, or delivery. That's right, y'all. Seafood delivered free to your home or business. Shrimp, oysters, catfish, and frog legs. They also have po' boys, spaghetti, fried pickles, homemade onion rings, salads, and 100% pure beef burgers. Marlin's Pizza Dough is made fresh every day. And this is the only place you can find the Lamex Pizza. And oh yeah, y'all, don't forget about that seafood muffalata. <music> Welcome back to Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Bruce. This is uh, this is the old school style of biscuits here. Oh yeah. This is how uh, Mama used to do it back in the day. Let's see how that goes. Look at that perfect biscuit. Now a lot of people don't know about that. They get their biscuits in a can. Well, we use Vienna sausage cans and different things to cut the biscuits with. Gotcha. Whatever you got handy. Whatever you got. Now y'all. Something I gotta show y'all. He's got a new cookbook coming out. It, it, it'll be on the market by the time this airs. And uh, some of this stuff is inspired from your grandma and your grandpa. Yeah, just different family members and me and my wife uh -huh. and my kids. You know, just stuff we cook all the time. You know, most of it's pretty simple. Uh, and uh, most of our cooking evolves on, it, you know, what it's what you got. What you got on hand. What you got, what you can catch. Uh, oh. In deer season, you eat the deer. That's it, you know. So you can go to his website. And I was thumbing through it a while ago, y'all. And, and there's... And, and it's not just a regular cookbook, because we got pictures of the family, and, uh, you know, me and my grandpa with some alligators, and different recipes I cook. We got pictures of it. Uh, we've been working on this thing, you know, a good while. Really? Really? You know, I liked some of the pictures. I was thumbing through it, and the one that caught my eye here was the famous fatty. Y'all gonna read what this is. It's uh, it's ground meat, five pounds of ground meat, and you lay it out and you stuff it with breakfast sausage, crawfish tails, smoked sausage, crab meat, your favorite cheese. It's got mushrooms and breadcrumbs in it, and then you wrap this baby up in four pounds of bacon. And the picture of this is priceless. So y'all gonna need to get y'all one of these. This is really really neat, and it's uh, authentic. What Bruce has been eating all his life. Yep. All right, you got all the biscuits cut. Yep, we got them cut, and uh, boy, they looking good. They huh? do, they do. Woo, now we got to cook them. All right, Bruce. Uh, this is uh, a camp oven. Uh, you notice the legs on the bottom of yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, the legs are for setting it on charcoal. You see, you can set this over the charcoal, you know, and to bake in them and stuff. Take, for instance, if I'm on bake you put your charcoals on the top ah because the biscuits are in there you can cook yeah. on the top and the bottom yeah you know so gotcha. this, 
But right now I'm gonna, uh, I think I'm gonna make me some milk gravy to go with these biscuits. Some yes, sausage indeed. Gravy. That sounds good. And, uh, I'm heating now what I'm doing here, throw a little flour in this pot. I like how you measure. That's how I cook. We get enough of this and enough of that. About that much. About yeah, yeah, much. Then add some more. <laughs> <laughs> One more little bit. <laughs> Everything's good with butter anyway. Oh yeah, you can't go wrong with butter. So we got the bisquick mix. We got the uh, butter in there. Then you're gonna, what you're gonna do? You're gonna brown that down into a. Yep. We're gonna add some uh, some milk to it. Okay. Okay. Well, that's looking good right there. Cooking on the coals, y'all. This is pretty neat. This is this the old school cooking right here before they had the microwaves. Yep. I need to turn up the fire just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he had it on low, now he's going to a medium look yeah, like. Yeah, had a couple more coals in there. Got to get it cooking. Yeah, I like to cook this flour down like this a little bit. Uh -huh. That butter, mix it up good, then start adding my milk. Okay. Um, I see you adding a little at a time. Yeah, I like to add just a little at a time and keep stirring, stirring, stirring. Okay. And you're going to see what we're going to have here in a little bit. We're going to have some good... I smell. I smell some of that flavors oh, coming yeah. out of there. When I get to it, this you could dump this gravy on a tire and eat it. <laughs> I'm telling you, this stuff is good. I was raised on this. Yes, indeed. I just stir, stir, stir. Cause if you stop stirring, you're gonna have dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. That's funny. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Now uh, we got some pork sausage in the skillet. Yeah, yeah. This is just ground up pork sausage. I like to brown it and uh, put it in my my gravy there in just a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. And uh. Now, something really neat, I, uh, we was talking a while ago, uh, you knew my grandpa. Yeah, yeah, I knew Mr. Tom pretty good. He used to come to the farm up there when I was up there, and uh, we'd process alligators. And he was an alligator hunter. And uh, actually, him and uh, Mr. A uh, Abel, Mr. Harold Abel, uh -huh. used to come out and they would skin together. And boy, you talk about a team. Oh, they were good. Oh, yeah. They, they hunt, love hunting them gators. And... Uh, they trapped, and I would just listen to them. I'd skin right next to them over there. Yeah. Listening to them, and, uh, boy, they'd come up with some stories. I bet. They matter got some good old stories. Matter of fact, I got one for you there. Yeah. Uh, we was in the slaughterhouse one day. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, well, actually one night, because we were skinning half the night. And, uh, anyway, what had happened, Mr. Harold come in there. He had a knife about that long. <laughs> I said, Mr. Harold, you need to get rid of that knife because he's walking around, stumbling around. And take it, you know, these men were in the 80s at yeah. this time. And uh, they were stumbling around with that knife. And I said, you need to get rid of that. I said, you're going to fall and stick somebody with that knife. Well, that was on a Thursday. Well, Friday night, Mr. Harold fell. And he stuck somebody with that knife. Uh-uh. Yep. Me. <laughs> right no there. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, your grandpa man. was there. And he, he, your grandpa run to the wall and got some paper towels. And uh, he tore them off. And I had the knife sticking in my hand. And I thought Mr. Harold had that big long knife, but he took my advice, he got a shorter one. Yeah. So, but he had that handle buried up to here. Mm -hmm. And when he let go, I picked my arm up like that because I thought he had the long knife. I was looking for the whole here. Oh, you thought it went all the way <laughs> yeah. through. But uh, I pulled it out and this blood went everywhere. And your grandpa come up and give me some paper towels and I put them on there and they run in the office there and got my wife and she brought me to the hospital and got me all sold up. Oh man. Yeah. And oh boy, they felt bad about that. But you know. The good old times, yeah. the good old days alligator hunting. We just huh? laughed about it, you know. Y'all yeah, done that for years and oh, years. Oh yeah. Yeah, I remember your grandpa coming in, him and Mr. Harold. And Mr. Mr. Harold was real funny about them hooks he had. He had some special hooks he got some somewhere. And uh, if he'd leave one in the slaughterhouse at night and he'd get home and count his hooks, he had a hook missing, he would call me 11 o'clock at night, 12 <laughs> o'clock at night. Uh, Bruce, uh, I got a hook up there somewhere. Make sure them bars don't throw my hook away. <laughs> oh, they'd leave the hook in the alligator yeah. when they'd bring them up there. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And, but uh, he would take his and wash them, you know, once he got them out the gator. and He'd reuse them. He'd reuse them, you know, which we all, re you know, reuse yeah, the hook. Yeah, but, that's pretty expensive. Yeah, but he had these special stainless steel hooks that, Shark hooks, he called them. Oh. And he, he paid like a dollar fifty a piece for them Ooh. back then. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was good money back yeah, then. Yeah, but he had them for years. And uh, I know some of the Mabel boys that that still fishing gators, and they're actually still using the same hooks. His yeah. same old hooks. Yep. That's I'm been around to, all them years. I'm gonna try to get one from one of them boys. Just hang on the wall. How going? We fixing to incorporate everything. Yeah. This uh, look like my sausage is pretty brown here. Got it looking pretty good. I need to put a little salt and pepper in here. Oh yeah. 
this grease right here and drain it off of here. Yeah. But, but I don't. <laughs> no. It wasn't that much in there anyway. No, that's not that much. That's going to make your grave a little bit better, too. Ooh, a little bit of drippings in there. Oh, yeah. That's a good, it's made a good color on it oh, now. Oh, yeah. Now we, 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 we cooking now. Well, that's something Ooh. you got to proportion just right. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. with all, all right. that fancy measuring we do. I tell you what, you make this at the deer camp, you ain't got to worry about cleaning no pot. <laughs> <laughs> they got a biscuit left, they're going to clean the bottom yeah. of that pot with They'll that biscuit. They'll sop it up. Yeah, I think we might need a little more. A little bit? A little more milk. Gotcha. Well, it sure looks good. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. We're going to add a little milk to this. We're fixing to get the biscuits on. Food's just about ready. Y'all hang tight. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking is two unique stores in one. The hardware department has everything you need to fix stuff right. The outdoor cooking section cannot be beaten. We have all the latest and greatest gadgets on the market. But also, we keep a large stock of the tried and tested cookware we've all come to love over the years. Coffee and biscuits every morning during the week, cooking demos on Saturdays, and customer service that will help you get the job done. Junior's Meat Market has everything you need when you're going to the camp. Groceries, fresh produce, beer, hoghead cheese, hot or mild, hot cracklings, and ice. Homemade smoked sausage, mild or hot, daily and weekly meat specials, 21 day aged steaks. We can also process your deer. Come on down to Junior's Meat Market and check us out. Ascension Troll and Motor is owned and operated by Carl Singletary offering the only Minn Kota Warranty Service Center in Ascension Parish. He not only works on all makes and model motors, but offers pickup and delivery. If you can't take it out of the water, he'll come to you. On-site boat lift, boat trailer repair, small fiberglass work, and gel coats. He sells refurbished motors, parts, and accessories. He's also a certified welder and mechanic. Here at Ascension Trolling Motors, our mission is to keep you fishing. Have you ever run out of money before your next paycheck? Car quit running? Electric bill due? Time to pay rent? If so, call Quick Cash of Gonzales. Let Kim Cruz Paraloo get you back on track with a payday loan. Quick Cash has been giving $50 to $300 loans since 1996. Most loans are approved in 15 minutes or less. Family owned, fast and friendly service. Remember, when you need cash quick, call Quick Cash. Located in LeBlanc's Plaza near AutoZone on Burnside. Welcome back to Cajun Living and Cooking. And then you put the camp style pot with the legs over it. See them biscuits in there? And the biscuits are in there. Raw right now. Raw right now. Uh, a lot of these companies put out cookbooks, mm -hmm. and they actually got a a, a, a a thing in there that tells you. Oh, how many briquettes for? The, like eight on the bottom and 17 on top. That's 25 cold. That will get this pot up to a 12 inch Dutch oven up to 350 degrees. But it's, you know, you the good thing about this kind of stuff, I cook a lot of peach cobblers and stews yeah. and you name it in there. So you don't need gas or electricity when you cook? No, uh-uh. And actually, I do it with wood. You know, build you up yeah. a fire, let the coals build up. Yeah, I guess after you're doing a couple times, you uh, yeah, you, you get, know just you about how much coals it, you need. You know? Now, how long are these going to have to sit? Uh, about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes, and 20, we should have... 25, about the same as a regular oven. Okay. Now, not only thing different now, I'm, I'll show you in about five minutes. Uh-huh. you got to turn these pots. Oh. You know, you want to take and always turn mine about a half a turn to the right. The pot. Oh, okay. Okay. So you don't get to stir it. You got to turn it. And then. Oh, you turn your lid. Turn your lid. I have to turn to the left. Ah, oh, all right. And what that does is keep your your heat even through the pot. So every five minutes, four, five, ten minutes, you take and turn your pot. Bruce. Okay, we ought to have some biscuits in this pot about right now. You were now. saying about the smelling. Yeah, you smell it. I do you smell it. I do. I do yep. smell it. Well, you ready to see what we it got in here? Smells really good. Drum roll, please. Son of a gun, without an oven. That's Dutch oven cooking right there. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's hard to get this kind of cooking, and not everybody knows about this kind of cooking. And it's simple. You it really just, is. You just got to get you a pot and play with it, you well, know. Well, these days people's lazy. Yeah. They don't want to do it. It's good, you know. We got hair canes around here, you know. Yeah. You get your bag of charcoal in a Dutch oven, you can cook anything in. I cook deer stews, uh, jambalayas, uh, you just name it, uh, peach cobblers. I love them peach cobblers in here. I do, too. Here. I do. Well, any kind of cobbler. I go out and pick my blackberries around here mm -hmm. and uh, come back. Me and the grandkids make us a blackberry cobbler. Yeah, Ooh. you got happy grandkids then. Yeah, and then we, we make our own ice cream. And, boy, you talking about good. That's the good old days, y'all. That's what we talking about, the good old days. All right, yeah. I think we've got all the food done. We're yeah. ready to plate some up That's and taste some. About. It's time to taste, y'all, so hang on. All right, y'all, I got a special treat here. This is my Momo Dupree, my dad's mom, and she has made a cake for us today, and it looks really, really good. Now, what's the name of the cake? Cajun cake. Cajun cake. Now, uh, can you tell me how to make it, or what's the ingredients? Yes, it's, uh, you make your own mixture for the cake, and then you put a whole can of, 20-ounce can of pineapple in it. Uh-huh. In the dough, okay. Uh -huh. You mix that up, then you put, uh, a topping which has butter, pecans, and coconut, and uh, it looks butter. really yeah, it's mm -hmm. good. It looks really really moist. It is a very rich cake, and it's an old Cajun recipe I got from an old friend. All right, you've been cooking that a while. Oh uh, yes, everywhere I go, if I bring it to a party or something, somebody wants the recipe. Everybody wants the Cajun yeah. cake. Well, I tell you what, we're gonna give it the taste test, Momo, in a minute. We're gonna get Bruce to try it out and see what he oh, thinks about okay. it. Oh, okay. Well, thanks for cooking, okay? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, we back. Bruce, everything's ready. Everything's ready to taste. Well, you know I'm ready to taste it. I hear you. Me too. It didn't take us long to do this either. Mmm. Well, the potatoes are good. Man, that gravy rocks. I ain't tried the potatoes yet. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That 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 uh flavoring she was talking about on there. Let's try Momo's cake. Mm -hmm. Son. I love that. That is good. That is good. That moist. That's you can keep on. You don't even need milk with that. You just keep on eating it. Well, Bruce, I had a blast over here me cooking too. with you. And you know me. I love to cook and I love to eat. Me too. And that's what we do down here in Louisiana. Yes, indeed. A lot of hunting in between, and that's hunting something to cook. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll get together maybe when it cools off, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe we'll go uh, catch something. Or yeah, yeah, let's do shoot that, Shoot something. And, uh, By then I might have my kitchen ready, and we can cook something. Yeah, that'd be really We're neat. We're going to cook anyway. We're going <laughs> to cook. It's just if we together or not when we're cooking. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a blast, y'all. This has uh, been a really good day. Got to see Bruce. Got to come over and meet the family. Had my family here. Had my grandma here. My aunts come over. It's been a really, really special day, and uh, I want to say uh, it's been fun. And thank y'all for watching Cajun Living and Cooking.